49 people are now known to have been killed in the Philippines. It is shaping up to deliver disaster for days. 9 to 13 feet of storm surge. The flooding is going to be catastrophic. For me, the mountains are everything. They've given me pretty much everything. There are absolutely no guarantees at this point that anyone will be skiing in 30 years time which is a horrendous thought. Every winter's different and is good for different reasons. I've had winters where there was no snow, it was horrible, but you become more creative because of that and you find out new stuff so you can learn. I think the thing that I've learned throughout all of my seasons is that the key is to progress. And I'd actually burned out on it when I was riding sort of semi-professionally in the late 90s, early 2000s. There's a lot of pressure on you and I'd, I'd lost a bit of the love and it took taking two years off to go away, do something else. And then when I came back, I was 10 times more stoked. And in, interestingly, in the last probably four or five years, introducing my kids to the mountains has been the best time I can remember in the house. This is the final stage of the igloo build and it's the most unpleasant for the person inside. It's just starting to do all of the housekeeping that you do when you're out winter camping. First thing to do is make sure you've got plenty of water and seeing as we're at tree level, the snow that you melt is full of tree debris. So the most important thing I brought with me is a sieve. And that means that I can get rid of all of the pine cones and rubbish that comes in with the water. Bingo. Ooh, that's lovely and hot. There's a lot of different moments that you have that maybe hit home. For me, it was having kids and then realizing what am I actually gonna hand over? Uh, it's certainly in the last 10 years seeing glacial retreat and re that really hitting home. Places that I go, I've, I've been in the mountains solidly for the last 10 years and going to a lot of the same places year in, year out and seeing the way the glaciers are changing in some of these resorts is, is frankly terrifying. Climate change is absolutely real. Uh, the idea that people wouldn't believe in it is in one sense astonishing to me but I understand why people maybe wouldn't believe it because if you live down at sea level in a temperate climate then there's not an awful lot of change for you but if you live in the mountains or really far north or really far south then you're seeing huge changes already. Predicting the future is, I mean it's, it's completely subjective isn't it but I think we've got 20 major coastal cities uh, Beijing is one of them and when they are seriously affected I think that's when we're going to see uh, big changes. We've just found a beautiful little step down. Tiny nose here trying to build a little kicker just over the nose and then it's a beautiful steep landing. Snow hasn't been that epic for the last two weeks but in this north facing area it's up here in the mountains the glaciers are retreating at such a staggering rate and winters like this brilliant winters where it snows loads obviously mask that fact for a lot of people but the reality is that the climate is changing and it's becoming more temperamental it's not necessarily warming in a linear fashion it's just becoming very very temperamental
I live out in Verbier in Switzerland and I've spoken to a lot of the locals and Verbier Village, which is down at uh, 1,450 metres altitude, used to be absolutely buried in snow every winter uh, 70, 80 years ago. The idea of them not being smothered in snow from December to March was completely ridiculous and now this winter they've had some good snow but it's not the norm. The snow line stops between 1400 and 1500 for most resorts now and that's starting to change the business the way a lot of the lower resorts work. It's not necessarily about how much snow we get, it's about the variations we see in temperatures. Digging for all of these igloos now, you dig down two meters and you'll see so many different layers where it's freezing cold for two weeks and then it's cooking hot for three days and then it rains and then... So you're seeing all of these, you can see the climate and all of the variables that we're seeing now in these blocks of snow. Settled, in camp, epic days riding. Didn't quite go my way, but it doesn't always. Uh, it's still a bit sore after the last one. <laughs> Welcome to the TARDIS. Rach and Josh are just starting to get tucked up, ready for bed. It stays between zero and two degrees in here because we've got the tunnel coming in and up. So all of the hot air gets trapped inside here. The biggest challenge is making sure that you don't get cold on the floor. So you've either got a roll mat or even better, that is the gold, the reindeer skin. If someone told you that an asteroid was gonna hit the earth in 50 years, you'd panic and you'd You'd say, we've got to do something about this. But climate change isn't that different. Yes, we're seeing action, but at nowhere near the speed that it needs to take place. We need to all make some kind of change. It's no good thinking that we can carry on as we are and wait for other people to make the change. We all have to make some small changes. You can change small things about the way you live, what you buy, who you bank with, which will have much wider reaching uh, consequences. Ethical banking, uh, you can go and take renewable ski holidays now. Uh, 50 of the 250 biggest ski resorts on the planet are close to self-sustaining now. They're using hydropower, solar power. So if you look into anything now, every aspect of your life as a consumer, you can start to affect change.